guys, this is Edna with Squire Photography and today I'm going to teach you how I made this image from these two images. So I'm going to teach you how to use digital backdrops and how to kind of meld them into your background or a background that you purchased. Uh, there's a lot of online resources like Etsy and KCC Actions um, where you can buy these beautiful surreal digital backdrops and offer those to your clients at a, either a premium charge or um, as a free added bonus. So I, it's not going to be identical to this because I'm starting from scratch with another um, background and but the same image but I want to teach you how I kind of do this so that you can also offer that to your clients. So I'm going to close this up here and we're going to start with the original image and we're going to remove the client my client here from this photo and we're going to obviously add it into this photo so this image the lighting is kind of coming from this left side not from i'm sorry from the right side not from the left side and this image i feel like the lighting is kind of coming in from the left more than the right here these are a little bit darker these are just a little bit brighter so i'm gonna instead of the last time what i did was i flipped my client so this time i'm gonna flip the background instead so um we're gonna copy this image here under the layers and i'm gonna go to edit transform flip horizontal and hmm do i like that yeah i'm sure it'll be fine so now i'm going to take my client and remove her from this background and i'm going to start by just using the quick selection tool and i'm just going to start selecting her you can make your brush bigger because you were just trying to make big chunks here and then we'll refine this edge here now we can go smaller and here we go. Beautiful. We're going to press Alt. You see how that turns into a minus? We're going to press Alt to remove the areas where we don't want the background to show. That looks pretty good already. Didn't take a lot of effort. The bottom of the dress probably isn't going to show because um, it's going to be hidden underneath the lavender fields. Now we're going to go to select, refine edge, and we're going to start refining this edge here. All right, so we click on smart radius and we kind of tweak this until we find that it's sort of finding the best edge here. You see it's starting to kind of get a little bit weird and the edge, there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. And we're also going to paint in where we think there's more hair like right here there's a little bit of hair and here see that it just knows which is really nice there you go and we can also clean that up a little bit more good the edges look pretty good and we can go in and clean this up even more but here I'm going to add a little bit of smoothness to the edge. I'm going to feather it by about 1.5. That's usually my favorite um, for an image where the, the background is blurred. We're going to add a little contrast just to the edge. And now we're going to shift the edge in. You see this little weird like gray that it's kind of trying to bring in a little bit of that old background, especially when you feather it. So if you feather it, you'll notice it brings in more of that background. The less you feather, the more it brings in. But we do want a little bit of feather because we want that edge to be a little bit soft. But we want to also contract that edge, shift that edge so that it comes in. So start kind of bringing that in until it, that little gray edge goes away. And that is looking pretty good. I'm at minus 78 right here, which is quite a bit. But it, it actually looks pretty good everywhere. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'm looking at all the edges here to make sure there's no gr weird gray edges. 
And now we're going to go to Selection and New Layer with Mask. Press OK. And now the background is gone. And I'm going to take this image with this mask and everything and I'm going to drop it into this image. Okay? So we're just going to grab this from this layer, this whole thing, and just drop it right into that background. And we're going to minimize this one. We're not going to need this one anymore. So here is my bride, my beautiful bride. And then when you look at a digital background, you want to see where it's sharp and where it's not so that you're going to put your subject where the sharpness is. Obviously, if I put her here in this blurriness, I'd have to make her really blurry, make her really foggy. But here, there's a lot of sharpness, right? Where these lavender, I, I think they're lavender bushes. I really don't even know. But we're going to drop her in that area right around there. So the first thing we've got to do is make her smaller. So let's let's transform her. You're always going to press shift. You hold down that shift in order to keep all of the ratios and proportions correct. And you just want to eyeball where she looks like she belongs. Where is normal, right? This doesn't look normal there. Uh, this doesn't look normal there. Like it would be weird. There would be giant bushes. But we're probably thinking that it's her. The bushes probably come up to about maybe her calf, mid calf or something. Oops, sorry. You see how I, I messed that up and she I didn't hold down the shift? You want to be careful with that. All right. So I'm guessing that just about there feels right to me. I want to get her right there in the middle. I think that looks beautiful. Awesome. So now we're seeing how much of the space she takes up, right? So I am going to do a foreground and a background layer with my, with my um, digital background. So here under background copy, we don't need this background anymore because that was the one that was flipped. So this is going to be our actual background. So we're going to make two layers of it. We're going to make a foreground. Let me type that in. Foreground, let's name it so you can keep them. And background, so you can keep them in order. Background. And I like to make another copy just in case because you never know. It's nice to have an, another original copy of that. All right, so my foreground is going to be the area where we are cutting out the foreground and pasting it in front of her so that she's like this area here, so that she's between this bush and this bush. You know what I mean? So here we go. This is the foreground. I'm going to remove her from the image by clicking on the little eyeball. And we're going to go into this, these bushes, and we're going to start grabbing her here. Oh, we lost our palette here for a second. Here we go. Um, right here with the quick selection tool, we're going to start grabbing some of these flowers. And I know this is a little bit tedious but it really helps if you do it this way, if you have a separation between background and foreground. Press shift to move over. And we're going to remove all of the lavender that we're grabbing that we don't want. And we don't have to be super careful over here because she's not being placed in that area. So again, I'm, I'm pressing Alt here and I'm removing the spots where she will be behind. This bush also, we're not going to see that bush. And here. You see, I have it. I have my brush at about a 25, and I have it on plus. 
plus means we're adding. And we can always shift to minus if we're just removing and going about that. But you can press Alt and Shift and they'll do the same thing. So here we're adding that little bush right there. And we can always refine this also. There we go. We're removing from here. That looks pretty good and we can go in and really tweak this, but it actually looks really nice. So especially the little dark edges, it's a good idea to get rid of those because you can tell they're like in a shadow and their background. So here where you see little dark edges, you want to get rid of those as best as you can. Awesome. Good. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's see. That looks good. I never have my palettes here. I have three monitors, so I bring these palettes in so that you can see what I'm doing, but I never have them on my main monitor. All right, so here, now that we have the foreground done, we are going to press um, select, and we are going to press refine edge, and that looks pretty good. We want to feather that just a tad again. Let's feather that just a little bit. Smooth out that edge a little. A little contrast. Shift the edge just a tad again. Probably not as much as the last time, but just a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing. We'll do new layer with mask. Press OK. Awesome. And it actually is just its own layer. But we're going to put my girl behind that layer, that foreground layer. See that? Just like that. So you can tweak the foreground layer and the background layer. This, um, our bright, you know what? Let's put client here. Client. There you go. So you can go in and play with this mask even more and remove and take away. So let's say I grab my brush and I, I well, to remove, we have to add black. So let's go grab our brush, say a, kind of a little bit of a soft brush, not too soft, say about mid hardness, and we can start removing. And I like to remove with a little bit of like maybe a 50% opacity, because it shows that it's kind of soft and there's a background behind it and it looks nice. It looks like it's like, you know, you can sometimes see through like there's little areas where you can see through. Like it's not a super harsh edge, right? I mean, it's they're never really super harsh edges. I go a little bit softer with this brush. All right. That's looking pretty good. Right, like you'll be able to see through the little flowers and see that there's a little dress down there and that. I'm not being as super careful as, as I would be if it were for a client. Like if this was going to be a humongous canvas, I definitely would spend way more time on this. I'd probably spend a couple of hours. But for this YouTube tutorial, I don't want to keep you guys here for a couple of hours. But I would definitely be going in and tapping at all these little spots and making sure that the dress is showing through in almost every single little flower, right? But my client is paying for that and that's the service that they're paying for. You guys don't want to see me do that, but that's what I would go in and do. You see how I'm just tapping away little bits of the background where it's dark, like there's a shadow, but you would probably see the dress through there. It wouldn't be too much of a shadow. And in the darker spots, I would do less opacity, right? I'd do like a 25, but we'll go through and darken the dress and add color to the dress and everything else. So... 
here we go all right that's looking pretty good right there what do you guys think I think that looks pretty good now you see this line here that came in with this image so we're gonna remove that just like this press X oops the other X at 100% let's remove that line see if it's on the other side I don't see it on the other side just this side all right that looks pretty good now we can start going in and cleaning her up where does she need to be cleaned up here right here you see this part of the shoulder we're gonna start going in and just cleaning her up and I'm at a hundred percent opacity with the brush and you just press X when you've made a mistake and you go the other way there we go that's looking pretty good looking awesome let's see how the hair is looking sometimes what I'll do is I'll go over a certain section like just really go over it and then just remove it back out like this so I know I'm not missing too much of that hair that looks good And I like how when you add a when you're using the um, when you're using the sorry guys give me one second when you're using the um, select refine edge and you pull the brush over the hair it sort of makes these areas more opaque so that you can kind of see the background through it I don't know if you can see that. I really like that you can remove it like this right or you can kind of leave it and let those sort of blend in or you can go with a 25% mask and just sort of start masking so that what it kind of looks like is that like the light from this area is reflecting on the hair instead of a bluish light or a reddish light or whatever it was that you happen to be in at the moment so it's kind of nice to have those meld just a little bit and that looks pretty good I'm just gonna remove this there's just no point to having that there right now you can go in and be a little bit more picky about this like I said but and I'll make sure to like clean up her face and do any kind of retouching after we're pretty much done with this and 100 percent going through checking the edges awesome and these areas that are kind of see-throughy like okay you see how this is like chiffon you can go through with a brush at 25 percent and just start bringing in your background right so with a black brush at about 25 percent you can start just bringing in your background here you can even go with a little bit less let's say 10 percent right like hey this is the background this is what the background looks like because this is kind of see-throughy this is see-through fabric too much five percent there we go so just those edges where the lavender would show through there you go you see that because right now it's wanting to show through with the mountain because the mountain was the background here but these little edges where the chiffon is showing we can show the lavender underneath at that and that definitely adds a bit of realism to this image right like all of a sudden you have these gorgeous little pieces of fabric that are just sort of showing through you can remove it if you don't like it you can do whatever you want but 
that looks really beautiful let's look at this one a little bit okay so now I love how she's masked out I love how the lavender feel is masked out but she looks like she's in brighter color it doesn't mask it doesn't match this like very surreal you know thing that's going on here so I am going to copy this layer just to have another copy right so that we we can always go back to this original but I took the little eyeball off of that one and this is the client copy so this is our working client copy and now we're gonna start making her the right color so we are going to add we're gonna go to control M and we're gonna go into our curves and first of all I think she needs to be darkened right I don't I think that she's too bright for this scenario that is closer to correct now the background is very purpley and very reddish and very soft so I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit um, soften those shadows so less contrast basically if you go like this there's more contrast if you go up like this there's less contrast so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of bring up the shadows a little bit which is gonna make it look more matte but it's also going to see like that would be like matte paper right all of the all of the um, filters that you see where they do matte paper that's really all you're doing is just bringing up the blacks the blacks are on the left side of your histogram on your curves so I just want I don't want it to be so contrasty I'm just gonna bring it up a tad and I'm also gonna darken these these highlights because this would be more highlighted and this would be less highlighted and it looks foggy so we're gonna do less highlight so I think that looks pretty good pretty good right there and now we're gonna add a little bit of blue to this because obviously she's in the lavender field she's gonna be more lavender colored so that looks pretty good I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of red because we're trying to go more purple right which I think that looks really nice so to give you an idea press OK this is the after from just playing with curves and this is the before after and before so we're liking we're li liking the way that this is looking I think it's awesome now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go through and I'm gonna make her flowers purple and make her dress purple you can leave it like this I think this looks pretty good but I think that if you add some purple to her dress I think it's gonna really lend itself to making another piece of artwork right so you can do this a couple of different ways you can do um, Viveza Nick collection Viveza and just so you guys know right now if you type in on Google Nick collection Viveza you can get this whole Nick collection for free Google I think bought Nick and I think they're just offering these things for free now so that used to be it used to be you'd have to purchase it but now they're free so download it put it in your Photoshop it's an amazing collection Viveza I use pretty much with every single image and I'm going to show you how that how I use it so I clicked on Viveza and sorry my computer's a little bit slow and here's our image and we're going to add a control point so we're going to add a control point to the dress and it knows where the dress begins and ends so if I add a control point here it's not going to touch the grass so watch this we're gonna add some red we're gonna add some blue Wow doesn't that look pretty and maybe we can darken it just a tad there we go and it did the whole dress without touching anything else in its surrounding now that normally matters right now it doesn't matter if it were gonna get the rest of the mountain because we haven't max masked out but normally in a photograph that you're doing this it would matter drastically but we're gonna press OK oh 
and we have to add this mask. Let's see, how do we do this? All right, maybe what I have to do, how do I add this mask? All right, guys, now I have to figure out, I, how do I do, I think it was control, let's see. There we go. And we're gonna add a mask. There we go. All right, I know if you press control and you click on anything, like anywhere, it's gonna, it's going to mask out exactly the same thing. It'll give you these marching ants and select it. All right, so that is already looking so much better. Check that out. That's the before and that's the after. And we can go in and make these little flowers also in the pinks and purples. So let's go to this photograph here, not the mask, but the actual photograph. And let's grab the flowers. I'm going to grab just kind of all of the flowers and make them all just a little bit more pinkish and purplish, including the white ones here. Uh, press Shift F6. Let's do um, 1.5 and press Control M and we're going to make them more purple. So more blue, more red, a little bit darker. That already looks really beautiful, doesn't it? There we go. That's gorgeous. Now, what you can do is press Control J and have that be its own little separate layer. So let me show you guys. That's its own little separate layer. And that gives you more control also because you can just mask that. So we'll do Control M. We'll do that again. And that's just copying that selection as Control J. Okay, guys? So RGB, we're going to drop that, make it nice and a little bit darker. So that if you make a little mistake, like you see how I grab the background here, you can mask that off by pressing mask right and then pressing x and just removing that area with the brush x let's go to 100 there we go so anywhere where you made a mistake you can just clean it up There we go. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? That looks really gorgeous. All right, so let's go back to our original image that I had originally done. I'm gonna show you what else I did. So this one here, see how it has kind of a yellowy tone? Um, I also liquefied my bride a little bit more before I put her into this image, but what I did was I added a mask not a mask, but like a filter to that image, to this one that is something that I use on in Rad Lab. So I'm going to show you what I did. And I'm going to go in and actually darken her up a little bit more to match the last image. Not too much, just a tad. Darken up those flowers just a tad. And at this point, I can go in and retouch any skin. Like, I can go in and retouch, right? Make sure that the skin looks perfect and beautiful. Now, I'm not going to go in and do a lot of this because I want you guys just to get a general idea of how to make this artwork, not necessarily retouching because we've gone through retouching tutorials already and... I, I just want to give you a generalized idea of how to make everything look cohesive and good. So here, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to this. So, so it matches a little bit more of that background. See how all of this is kind of a yellowy, hazy color? So we'll do that. 
and I'm going to darken up those highlights just a little bit. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to add a filter to this whole thing. And at this point, you should save your image. Because Radlab will just kind of squish everything into one layer. So I'm going to go in and add this under my pictures. I will name this tutorial. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to go to Radlab. And I think it's going very slowly, but RadLab should be right here. Hello, RadLab. There you are. And I'm going to add, whenever you put a filter in, in a photograph like this, you want to make sure that you do the entire photograph, not just the background, not just the girl by herself, but the entire photograph. And I really liked, mm, we can do get faded. Look at how pretty that looks. Looks hard, looks soft. I really like looks soft. So that will make the whole thing have one particular like look, right? One particular feel to the image. All right, there you go. Isn't that beautiful? It looks gorgeous just like this. So when you add a filter, it allows you the flexibility to make everything else look cohesive. Now, again, you can go in and soften this area a little bit more. You can go in and actually, let me, you can make her smaller in the photograph if you wanted to. Right. You can go in and do a whole bunch of different stuff, but you have to do it before you do Rad Lab. Right. So. We're going to leave this like this and I want to inspire you guys to go out and get some actions and to get, uh, op get rad lab, just kind of get under their newsletter and wait for a sale and pick up rad lab and get some digital backgrounds and have some fun and do something creative and different from your, for your clients. There's supposedly 478 professional photographers in Orange County. And for me, this is a very competitive industry. I've been in business for over 20 years and you have to do different things. Sometimes you have to break out of the mold of the stuff that you've been doing all the time and get creative and do something different for your clients so that you can set your yourself apart. Give them a unique and different experience that no one else is doing. All right, guys, you know the spiel. Subscribe and like this image. And for some reason, if you leave a comment, um, YouTube will kick this up in their algorithm and allow more people to see it. And that's always appreciated, guys. So good or bad, give me some comments below. Like and subscribe. Always feel free to go onto my website for inspiration. It's Square Eye Photography. I like the human eye, so Square Eye Photography. And I'm Edna Udave. I'm here to help you with anything that you guys need. I'm hoping to be uh, starting um, YouTube tutorial series on teaching photography from the beginning, photo 101, all the way to like handling difficult lighting as a wedding and portrait photographer. So please keep posted, subscribe, make sure that you click on that notifications icon. And that way, you know, when I have videos that come up, I try to do them, them pretty much weekly. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. And hey, guys, I'm adding this quick addendum like. because as I was uploading to YouTube, I realized that I forgot something super important. This image looked super flat to me and I was looking up at a printed image of the same photograph of the image that I had already previously done. And I realized that there is no shadows. There is no shadows here. There's no shadows behind her. And I was like, no, I've got to redo this because I can't leave everybody just with some half ass video tutorial on how to do something. And it looks awful. So we're going to add some shadows. Now, um, the, the first thing we're going to do is add shadows to the dress. So here we're going to click 
on. I'm going to bring these palettes back in because you guys need to see them. Here on this Viveza 2 layer, the one that we did to turn this dress purple and it added another layer, we are going to, we can either burn this part of the dress. So let me show you how we do that. We can just go on here and click on the burn button. Sorry, my computer's doing all kinds of processing and is super slow right now. And we're going to go in and make the exposure about 25%. So forgive me here. And we are looking at where the light is coming from. So the light is coming from this side. So we're going to burn as if the, the light was... It was casting a shadow, right? This is the side that's light and this is the side that's dark. So we're going to burn this area here a little bit, okay? I'm going to go a little bit lighter, like 10%. So right down here and then a little bit down here and then right, right up against the bushes here. And the closer you get to the bushes, the darker that area needs to be. So just like that. And of course there would be a little bit of darkening around here. And I have it at a mid-tone exposure. You can always mess with it and go into shadows and you see how much darker it gets. And if, you, if that, that shadow isn't a shadow that you like, you can always go in and just grab that area. Let's say that one and that one. And you can add the color of shadow you think you want to have. So let's make another layer on top. And let's pick like a more of a maybe brownish, purplish, grayish color, maybe like that. And then we'll paint that on at, let's say, a feathering of uh, 50. And we'll just add a bucket. Uh, where's my bucket? Here it is. We'll do the paint bucket tool and we'll just add that on just like that. I think it should be even darker. Let's go with darker. Of course, we're not, it's not going to look just like this, but there we go. And then we can change the opacity down to something like this. And of course, we can add another layer to it. Um, we can also go in and overlay it or soft light. You can play with whatever you like, like color burn. You know, I think that looks pretty good with the color burn. And then we can... You know, just go in and erase part of it, however you want to do it. Like, oops, um, that was not a good hardness. And let's go to 25%. You know, just however you want to do it is fine. There's so many different ways to do stuff in Photoshop. You just, it just gets overwhelming, right? Like, oh, how do I do this? There's a million different ways. And I think that I'm also going to burn this side of the dress a little bit more. So I'm going back to this layer and I'm going to burn this part of the dress a little bit more because, you know, this part's in shadow, right? This part's in highlight. So we don't burn, we, we mostly want to burn this side. Maybe a little bit of her body on this side too. A little bit, not a lot. And then we have to have a shadow here, right? So first of all, you see this line here? Let's get rid of that. So let's go to our black and white again. Oops. We're going to go here, brush, X. This is coming from one of those. There we go. I've got three layers here. So, um, all right. So now we're going to add a shadow back here. And again, we can just grab the area where you think the shadow is going to be, like right around here, right? A little bit of this bush maybe is taken. These bushes a little bit. Maybe something like that, right? Maybe right around here. And we'll press Shift F6 and we'll do that at 50 or 100, let's say. And then again, we're working here on this top layer. And we'll press uh, G and then we'll, we'll lower that opacity down. And we're going to do two different shadows because there's shadows kind of gradate from lighter to darker. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of all parts of the shadows as we get closer 
and as we get farther away. So I'm just erasing it off the dress and then we'll do another little shadow. So we'll do one that's even closer, like right here. We'll press Shift F6 and this one we won't feather as much. We'll do, let's say 30 and we'll add a little bit of bucket fill to this. A new layer. There you go. And again, we'll drop that opacity. And again, we can try overlay and see how that looks. I like that actually overlay looks really good. And we, we can again make a mask and just keep the portions that we want to keep or remove the portions that we don't want. Masking is the best way to work with pretty much anything. So that gets, gets us a little bit closer to something more realistic. You can tell there's a little bit more shading. I, I want it. I want a little bit more shading with this, a little bit darker. Maybe right around here, right? Maybe a little bit more here. This time I'll do 60. We'll add another bucket. And then we'll let's try overlay again. It's too much, so we'll drop the opacity down. There we go. That looks pretty good. Add another mask. Instead of erasing, get in the habit of using masks. I, I try not to get lazy about it, but sometimes I do. But there we go. So I think that looks a million times better. Yeah, that looks a lot better, right? That she has some shading down here and that she's got shadows right behind her. It gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensionality. Um, I would definitely, if this was for a client, I'd be taking way more time to do this, but I don't want to get you guys on YouTube here for two hours to make one image. So sorry about leaving this out, but this is a little addendum. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a great day.